Welcome, and thank you for tuning in. You're watching Now You Know, a technology enthusiast channel reviewing and discussing all things tech. And today, we are going to talk about a review that was done on a Model 3 by an automotive veteran who tears down vehicles to understand build and quality. And uh, they got their hands on a Model 3. Now, I do not know uh, where in production uh, of the Model 3 that this actually fits in. It could have been an early... Um, production unit. It could be a later production unit. Uh, we're not quite sure. Um, so let's just let's just dig in and and see um, and go through some of the statements that he has made and and see what your thoughts are on them because I think some of them are to be concerned about, where others I'm not quite sure. Um, so let's dig in. They start the review in the front of the vehicle, and they start reviewing how they open the hood in case of an emergency. And there is a little plastic medallion in the front bumper that has to be pulled out. You have to have a set of jumper wires and a 12-volt battery to release the hood. Now you're saying, well, why would you want to do that? Well, if power isn't flowing to the car or if your touchscreen is out, how are you going to open up the, the frunk, I should say? And the reason why you want to open the frunk is there actually is a power cable up there. And in order to cut something, if a firefighter had a cut into the car, you need to clip this power cable in two spots to be able to um, shut power down to the vehicle, get the saw, and cut it through. Now, I'm not a firefighter, but I could only imagine having to try and have a little set of jumper wires and a 12-volt battery um, and know where this thing, this medallion is to pop out of the bumper and you know, connect these things to, to pop the frunk. I just think that that is just a lot to ask. And in a safety situation, I'm not really sure you're going to go through all that to get uh, the frunk open. Um, the complaint was that there should be a mechanical release inside the vehicle, just like all of our vehicles have, where you pull it, it pops it up, you get in there, you're done. Um, I'm not sure why they couldn't do that. Maybe there's another reason. Um, if you know it, please comment down below and let me know your thoughts because I do believe that that is a safety concern, um, maybe one that Tesla should, should address. Um, so after they review the hood, they walk to the, the driver's side um, front door and he starts talking about the door handle and how it should be a one press, thumb in, pull out, you open the door. I'm not buying this with him because this is sort of a personal preference and he said that he did state that he hurt his wrist and that he could not um, or didn't feel comfortable opening it up with one hand so he pushed it with right hand and opened it with the left. Remember that there's a reason why these door handles are, are flush. There's about a 3% increase um, in range um, just due to the wind shear of not having those um, handles sitting outside the door. Could they have been a better design? Sure. I'm not sure that it's that horrible um, to be able to use. But um, he continued on um, going up the door. They closed it a few times and they complained about the rattles that were actually inside the vehicle or inside the door every time that they closed it. And he did also mention that it wasn't every door that was doing that. So maybe there was something wrong with the door. Maybe it was just a glass banging inside, which obviously should not happen. Um, but um, please, current Tesla Model 3 owners, <laughs> let me know your thoughts. S and X owners, let me know your thoughts. Have you had any similar experiences um, like he's explaining? I I'd love to hear and uh, see what your comments are. So then he furthered up uh, the door going to the the pillar or the mirror and there's a little triangle piece there and there is what they call a cat's paw and what the cat's paw does is when the window rolls up it sort of seals it from from rain and wind and his statement was basically that there's no way that this was uh, originally manufactured on the vehicle that it was an afterthought and further stated that there is not one on the passenger side now that is certainly odd you should never see two different things, um, especially when it's a window. Um, they should both ha look exactly the same. So I'm just curious, you know, does anybody else have that on their vehicle? Um, have you seen it? I know I certainly have. I'd love to hear your comments again, you know, down below. 
um, Model 3 owners, this is your, your chance to sort of clear the air and um, you know identify if some of these things that he's talking about are actually true. Um, so he went down, the next was the rear door. And the complaint there was that there are no mechanical re releases on the rear doors. Uh, again, it's a safety issue. And his statement was that if there was an emergency and nobody could get out of the rear doors, they'd either have to climb up through the front and get out the uh, driver or passenger door, or they would have to fold down one of the seats, crawl into the trunk, pop the uh, mechanical release in the trunk, open the trunk, and get out. That does sound like a lot to do, especially if there's an emergency situation um, and maybe you're not in the right frame of mind, but um, I think crawling over the front, uh, into the front seat and getting out those doors is much easier um, than going, um, pulling down the, the seat and going out the trunk. But, you know, I, I, I can't necessarily disagree that there shouldn't be um, mechanical releases on the door. I'm not sure why Tesla decided only to put them in the front um, again, maybe that's something that they'll address, but let me know your thoughts again here. Um, do you worry about that? Are you concerned or are you just, yeah, it's fine. I would just hop up and, and get out the, the front seat. But if you're in an accident and, and maybe that, that front of the vehicle is smashed in where you can't, um, but you would be able to get out one of your doors, but you can't because there's no mechanical release. So what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I, I sort of think that that is a valid point. Um, so as he moved around the vehicle, he is now at the rear of the vehicle, and um, he is reviewing the gaps or the stack tolerances on the on the trunk lid um, going down to the bumper. And he did state on one side he can just fit a fingernail in there, but on the other side he actually was able to stick his thumb um, into the gap. Now, this is not the first time that I heard about these large gap tolerances on these vehicles. Um, usually what that signifies is something in production was not quite lined up right, and, and the vehicle is actually showing that now because um, those gaps do exist. So let me know your thoughts. Are you a current Model 3 owner? Do you have these same issues? Um, and he actually even made a funny reference that um, you could see these gaps from Mars. And um, I'm not sure if that was a, a poke at Elon and, and SpaceX, but needless to say, the gaps were definitely there. And you know, hopefully as Tesla progresses through their production, they decrease some of the bottlenecks and they actually get to a more uh, conducive state to be able to produce the vehicles that you'll see some of those things diminish. Um, but we'll see as the vehicle continues to roll out. Um, so, on the rear of the vehicle, we open up the trunk, there is an actual sticker up toward the um, rear passenger side, um, and I'm sure there's one on the driver's side, that basically states, you know, hey, if, if you're in an emergency, this is sort of where you need to cut the vehicle um, to get your uh, passengers out. The issue was is that there was supposed to be a marking somewhere on the outside of the vehicle. He pointed to the, the chrome detail around the rear rear window um, that should say, you know, maybe a some kind of symbol or dot where it would say, hey, you need to cut here. And basically the reason is because you just don't know what you're cutting into. You could hit a power um, line or something of that nature and, and cause more damage um, than you're doing good. So from a safety concern, that was another issue. But on that one, again, I'm just not quite sure if I'm a firefighter and there really truly is an emergency, if I'm looking for all these stickers and these little identification marks, or am I taking the saw and cutting through? Now, I would hope that the firefighters or the emergency responders are actually taking some kind of action to make sure that they're doing the right thing. Um, but sometimes time is of the essence. And when you, when you start looking at some of those things, um, it can certainly... Uh, draw away from that. So um, that was pretty much sums up his review of the vehicle. Um, there were a couple other statements, really two other statements that um, I wanted to share with you. And one of them was lawyers are going to have a field day with this vehicle. Now I'm assuming he is referencing the safety issues that he had brought up, but there Tesla very well may have um, factual information that that you know the reasons why they're doing things and i'm sure that they do um, i don't think you just build a car and and you don't put thought into every aspect of it um, but maybe some uh, aspects got more attention than others 
And then the last thing he said, which is sort of, sort of stuck with me, is that how could Tesla release this vehicle? Or he could not believe that Tesla could release this vehicle. That is sort of an issue for me because if the vehicle is actually that bad, the gaps, the safety issues, mechanical releases on the front and on the rear, rear um, doors, you know, those are definitely some concerns to think about. So listen, thank you for watching. Please let me know your thoughts. Comment down below because I really want to get to, to, to the bottom of some of these issues to see how relevant and true they actually are. Um, if you did like the video, please give me a thumbs up and then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. Now you know.